for a long time. I really thought that, hey, uh, you know, I'm just a very charismatic guy. I'm very creative, and no, I get my strength from her, you know? And um, that's weird because that's something that she never really taught me. It just, it just runs in our family, you know? You know, uh, a, a survival gene, you know? Player, hater, vanilla bill down, make it rain. Fuck him. Get a water. My name is uh, Sir Gerald Akbar, and um, I go by the alias Ghetto Art. I was, you know, born in 1980, and um, I uh, grew up in a foster home. And um, most of my childhood really was a, a, a blackout because um, my mother, you know, she uh, went to prison in 1980 for a uh, first-degree murder. The irony was I didn't even know I had a brother or a sister until I was about maybe eight years old. But I lived in, you know, group homes and foster homes, just, you know, one minute I'm here, one minute I, I was there. When I was younger, I viewed her as a monster. Now, I'm like, holy crap, this woman was uh, somewhat of a political prisoner. My name is Lawana Lampkins, and I am basically now just trying to get my life back. I suffered torture and interrogation, and I never committed the crime. So they gave me 60 years. Bottom line, I went to prison. I went one way, my children, they went another. My mentality was like, excuse my language, it was like, fuck family. When my brother died and my sister went to prison, I said, shit, I'm not going to live to see her free. I truly believe that, you know? Spalding by Just Rhymes. My mother was named Lawana Lampkins. Today you might know her as inmate N37334. My father was named Spalding. Today you can pretty much buy him at any sports store. My mother was a talented poet. Our family would buy marijuana and sit around as she would read her poems. My dad doesn't do pretty much anything. Before Prince died, my daughter was in Minnesota. She had been in a car accident and she was crippled. And she started letting people come in to help her with her disability. And she got set up by the police in Minnesota. <laughs> I was just feeling worn out, and I just needed to talk to somebody, so I gave my Aunt Renee a, a random phone call. And my aunt screamed really loud on the phone, Oh, my God! Oh, my God! And the first thing she said was, You need to come home. Your mom is free. She's out of jail, and I got her phone number. I was like, She got a phone? What, what, what's going on? Whoa, 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 she's out of jail. Had no idea. She was free for, like, one year before I found out she was released. We reunited. And it was really, really great. I, I, I just, just didn't believe it would ever happen. And so when we uh, were living together at the rooming house, he would, you know, he, he'd go through my papers and my things I'd had, you know, and he'd, see, and he'd see my art. And he's like, are you an artist? Well, he didn't know me as well as Prince knew me because Prince kept up. But <laughs> I said, yeah, I do art. That's what I did in prison. That's the way I made my money. So drawing for me was not just uh, a therapy in dealing with passing my time, but it was also a means of survival. I was not only just drawing paper, but I was drawing posters, and then they had me painting the walls, and I was doing murals, and I, did, I built stages, and I built a spaceship, and people walked out of it. 
So, you know, my art just like really, really blew up in my mind. I was really happy about my art and I still am. My mother was an artist and um, I got it from her. But the only problem was I got her spirit from art, but I didn't exactly get her hand and eye coordination, you know? So, but, but, but the idea of art and this, the fact that, you know, it lives in me, it's kind of like a family thing too. It's, it's something that's just been passed down through genetics, you know? And um, it's very surreal that, you know, even when she gives me a phone call, you know, sometime middle of the night, I'm like, who the hell is calling me? Oh, it's her, what, what does she want? And I stopped saying, what does she want? Because I'm like, well, she's here, you know, whatever, you know? And um, that's how I feel about that. Yeah. We're off to go pick up my mom's. She's, uh, she's already aesthetic. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get another perm, mama, because my, my hair is drying up real bad. Okay, it's apartment complex. Okay, we here. Yeah, come on out. Yeah, we here. Come this on. is my best friend from prison that knows me as an artist. We had an argument over my art in prison, in Rosario. <laughs> come on, you guys. We're gonna be a second, but I want you guys to at least meet her. Oh, snaps, man. I can see that my shit is just jacked up right now. I'm supposed to come meet this lady looking fresh, fresh. <laughs> Going, this is my Hi. sister, and you tell them a little story about my art. How we we got into it over my art. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> How many stories do we got? A lot of stories. <laughs> I'm gonna go pick her up at Cottage Grove. Um. You are so handsome. Oh, Shut up, Rara. Thank you very much. Wow. Hey, you make you make. Move forward, life. Yes, baby. Okay, I gotta go. Love you, I love you. What I what I learned when I came home. You know, with, with my son, he would take me out, you know, and uh, we would go out to sell ghetto arts. It didn't really start with the ghetto arts because when he came home, he was like, Mom, you're an artist. I said, Yeah, I'm an artist. But something kept on troubling him. It was like he couldn't pinpoint what was on his mind. So one day he's like, I'm going to do a, a, a piece of paper. So he takes one piece of paper and he tears it up and about 12 different pieces. I'm like, Why is he sitting over there tearing that piece of paper? But I didn't have a clue. We went downtown. He wrote something on each piece of paper. Right. We went downtown, and he would stop people and say, "Do you want to buy this piece of paper? Because my signature is on." <laughs> and no. people would buy the piece of paper. It's just a blank piece. Of, you just tear off the piece and put your initials. Right. And right. I'm sitting on the side looking at him like, and he's like, and then some people be like, "The importance of family is." At the end of the day, you, you're all, you, you know, you're all each other's God, you know? And to really, really appreciate your family, you gotta love the worst thing about them. Just as much as you love the best qualities about them, you know? It was so easy for me to disregard who I was and live a life, uh, an alias life. But, you know, when the person is there that brought you into this world, that named you, and all the things you don't know about yourself, like the mystery, you know, I got my identity back.